are live. Yay. Okay, cool. So, hello everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in to this live course report Q&A. My name is Liz Eggleston. I work on Course Report, which is a resource for finding the coding boot camps that's right for you. Um, coding boot camps, as you probably know, are intensive, usually full-time, usually three-month-long programs that teach technical skills like web and mobile development, data science, other digital skills. Um, and Course Report has the most complete directory of those boot camps around the world. You can use it to find the school that fits your needs. So um, I hope that you'll visit Course Report. Um, so because by definition a coding boot camp is intensive and immersive, it's a big decision. It takes some preparation. Um, it takes work to create your application, to prep for the interview, and then to get ready for the actual boot camp and um, really be like a rock star and be at the top of your class. So today we are joined by Bomik and Eric from Thinkful and Iron Yard. Um, Thinkful and Iron Yard have teamed up for this really interesting new option um, at Iron Yard called self-paced front-end engineering. Um, and this is sort of a hybrid between online and in-person courses. Um, and depending on where you are in your coding journey, it could be a really great option for you. So since we have Eric here, who's been with Iron Yard since its inception, um, I thought he would actually be a really great person to also answer some of the frequently asked questions that I get all the time about preparing for a boot camp, um, like really knowing if you're ready and what boot camp admissions teams are looking for. Um, and then we're also going to talk specifically about that self-paced course itself. Um, so one reminder that I want to uh, make sure everyone remembers is, is that we have a really cool scholarship to Thinkful courses right now. So that includes this self-paced course, um, and that's it's $100 off uh, for the course. So email um, Bomik to redeem that scholarship. His email should be on the screen, um, and I'll show that in just one second. Um, and then also use the Q&A app in Hangouts, or you can always tweet at Course Report with any of your questions about boot camps, Iron Yard, Thinkful, this class in particular, um, so that we can try and answer everyone, everyone's questions during the live Q&A. Um, so we will get started. So I just want to start with some introductions. So Eric and Bomik, do you mind uh, giving us a quick intro and letting us know who you are, how you got to the boot camp that you're working with? Sure. So I work at Thinkful. I was actually one of the first students at Thinkful a couple years ago. Um, I was taking our front end course and then I was hired as an intern and then I became full time the last couple of years. And the last few months I've been working on these boot camp partnerships to help students who are interested in applying to a full time boot camp but they're not ready yet. So I've kind of been working, um, spending most of my time on there. I'm the one kind of onboarding the students, matching them with their mentors, and just making sure they have a good experience. Awesome. I love that there's a real person taking people through that whole yeah. experience, the whole onboarding. I have calls process. with all of them to make sure they understand. Because, I mean, it's kind of, it, it is kind of like unusual to think about like a a blended course and how it works. So I just have a call with them to make sure they they know how, like the right expectations and and they're happy. Sweet, Eric, tell us about yourself. Sure. Um, so my background is actually in marketing. So I spent a lot of years um, in the agency world, uh, doing brand strategy and content strategy and but a general marketing strategy for. All sorts of companies, Best Buy and Doubleday Publishing and a bunch of really cool people to work with. Um, and that was kind of my world. And um, I, at one point, started to do some soul searching and realized that when work didn't feel like work, I was working on some sort of technological project, launching a website or you know, helping a client build an app. And so I started to dive into the world of tech and um, tried to start a couple companies, and um, you know, as young sort of immature entrepreneurship generally goes, they didn't go anywhere. Um, but I got the bug and happened to cross paths with um, the CEO of the Iron Yard, uh, Peter Barth, and he was running an accelerator program in the southeast at the time, a software accelerator program. And so through a series of circumstances, we kind of hit it off, and I ended up jumping into the world of venture capital and, um, you know, investing in companies and, you know, getting mentors to come and, and mentor in our accelerator program. And uh, so we just did sort of seed stage software investment and mentorship 
uh, for a couple of years, which is really, really great and kind of cut my teeth in the software world. And we in the Southeast, you know, it's kind of interesting. We're not in a huge market like, you know, New York or San Francisco. Um, and so when startups raise money and start to grow, they have a, a particularly difficult time hiring talent. Um, and so we were trying to figure out how we solved that problem for our portfolio companies who were going through the accelerator program. And so we had what we thought was a wild idea of actually just training people to build software. Um, and at the time, it's kind of funny. I mean, we didn't really know necessarily that a, a lot of other things like this existed. Um, you know, we do the, the immersive format, and there were only a couple people doing that at the time. Um, and so we ran a class, and it was really successful, and we started getting calls from other cities across the southeast saying, uh, hey, we heard that you ran a class and are training developers. We'd love for you to put a training program in our city. And it never really occurred to us you know, to expand. We were trying to solve mm -hmm. our own talent problem um, as investors. And so um, we'd hired a really talented instructor and looked at launching in a couple other cities, and um, it kind of grew wings of its own, and here we are today, uh, which is really exciting. So we've been doing the three-month... Uh, in immersive format for a while, and we're excited to be sort of expanding into other areas. Yeah, I think one of the coolest parts about Ironyard is um, that you're like set within an accelerator anytime that you're learning like around people that are potential employers. It's like very inspiring and, and really cool. Um, but also like seeing how you've scaled the Ironyard is like effectively has been really neat. Um, uh, it's been great. It's definitely been a challenge. Um, yeah. but, you know, the, the really exciting thing is we've had a couple of students go through um, the, the code school slide mm -hmm. and actually submit products to accelerators and, and get accepted. Um, so it's kind of, a neat, kind of a neat thing to see that happen because we are really passionate about both sides of the coin. But anyways, enough, yeah. enough <laughs> about me. Well, how many how many campuses and like students do y'all have now? Oh, that's a great question. So we have 14 campuses in the states, and we just announced this week uh, yesterday actually that we're launching a campus in London. Yes. Oh, um, wow. Okay, cool. And I would need to check our current enrollment numbers, but I people who are in class right now is mm -hmm. five or six hundred people probably. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of people. Um, Very cool. Really exciting. Cool. Okay, so I just want to jump into some of the questions that we collected before the Q and A, and questions that I have um, about preparing and 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 sort of like the application, I guess, um, to Iron Yard and to coding bootcamps in general. So um, I think a lot of coding bootcamps, like when you look at their you know requirements and like what people need to do to get in, you see things like have emotional maturity and grit and self motivation. Um, how I just want to talk about like how you can. Um, sort of show those and demonstrate those on an application or an interview. So how have you seen past like Iron Yard students really show you things like maturity and grit in an application? Well, that's a really great question. So, you know, applications are an interesting thing. Uh, I don't think there's necessarily a right way to do them um, because people have sort of varying levels of success with different mm -hmm. types of applications. Our application is really just, it's just sort of a, you know, you're turning the doorknob and starting to open the door. Um, we really dive into the meat of who you are when you enter the interview process. Um, so we ask people to, uh, we ask people why they're interested in studying at the Iron Yard and sort of spending, you know, an intense amount of time uh, or a significant amount of time um, studying at a really intense pace. But I think the thing that's interesting is not everyone is necessarily adept at communicating with a written word. And that's not because people aren't smart. It's just because that may just not be the best way that people can communicate. And so we our, our written application is definitely very important, but um, we see that as the very beginning of a conversation. So when people go through our interview process, that's really where we dive in. So we have a, you know, a set of questions that we try to work through with every student. 
Um, they have an initial interview with the campus director, um, and the campus director is really trying to get a gut check on their motivation and their interest in the craft. And um, we, you know, we don't require any pre-existing programming experience, but we do okay. ask people to try programming. Um, but that's part of the interview process, right? You know, By by like trying programming, like what do you do you want to see that somebody has like code on GitHub? Do you want to see that they've like gone through Code Academy or we want to know whether you were drawn into the actual act of writing JavaScript or Rails or whatever subject you're studying. Okay. Um, or if you hated it, because there's a big difference. It's kind of like playing the piano, right? Mm -hmm. um, everyone loves the idea of playing the piano, but if you think about trying to sit down and read a piece of music uh, and and actually put fingers to keys, that's a that's a more difficult process. And everyone loves the idea, but it's not as rewarding for some people to actually go through the act of doing that. So we have people just get a gut check on, hey, you're interested in the front end course? Like, just go try and write some JavaScript. You don't have to get good at it. You don't have to be proficient, mm -hmm. but just do some exercises. And there are a ton of great resources out there, Treehouse and Code Academy and Code School. I mean, um, you know, just do some exercises. And if you're drawn into it and you get, you know, that mild level of addiction to the problem solving, that's a really good sign. Yeah. Um, we have some people who say, you know, I really didn't actually like typing code into a text editor. Um, and, you know, we say, well, you're probably not going to, you probably this is probably not a good career fit because that's just what you're going to be doing, like you know, incessantly. So, sure. um, so that's how we do that. And then, so they interview the campus director, then they interview with the instructor. Mm -hmm. um, oh, cool! Really looking for sort of um, individual learning style, mm -hmm. maybe individual, you know, specific stuff. Right. That. And then, what interests you about the tech stack that you're interested in? So we have a lot of students who may apply for one program and then. They talk with an instructor and they say, and you're really interested in data. You might want to do our data science course mm -hmm. like with Python. Um, and so trying to help people educate them a little bit on, you know, what are you interested in and does that map with our courses? And then what's your goal? Um, is that a career? Is it, you know, and then, you know, we try and just have honest conversations internally. And then yeah. a lot of times we'll have students interview with a with a current student or um, alumni as well, so that they have a chance to talk with someone really honestly about the programs, and it's not just us like the talking heads. So that's cool. Yeah. I love that you have them talk to an instructor. Um, what what type of like what is Iron Yard's sort of approach to teaching? Is the instruction like super hands on, super hands off? What types of like learners do really well in a in an iron yarn class? Sure, that's a great question. So I, I'll try to be not as long winded because I love talking about this stuff. Um, so you know, if you think about how to deliver information in a in a physical setting, um, lecture is the most efficient way to give the highest number of people the greatest amount of information, and so that's why the lecture is basically the standard across almost any form of education at any age in any subject matter, right? Mm -hmm. The interesting advantage that we have with programming is that you can lecture and do live demonstration at the same time. And I think that's a really, from a sort of pedagogical perspective, if you want to use fancy terms, um, but in education theory, that's a really unique standpoint that we have. Um, we can have someone lecturing and building software at the same time and basically talk you through the theory behind what they're doing. And that's a really powerful experience. Um, so we deliver um, lectures. So we have lectures from 9 to noon um, in our immersive format. And um, it's there aren't, there aren't really any slides. It's mm -hmm. the instructor saying, today we are going to build X or we're going to pick up on building X, or we're going to talk about version control. And actually look at that on the instructor screen. And then we have a significant amount of lab time, and that is um, A, because students need sort of 
a controlled environment with collaborating with other people and the instructor to do their homework, but that's really where you can actually address those individual learning styles that I mentioned um, that the instructor is looking for in their interview, right? Mm -hmm. Someone may be a really visual learner, and so when you look at Git, I mean, they may need the branches drawn out on a whiteboard, and then they say, that's it, I got it. And other people may need analogies or different things. So for us, lab time is definitely a chance for people to interact with each other, but more so a chance for the instructor to really cater to those individual learning styles and sort of individual learning barriers that people might face. It's very cool. Um, you mentioned really briefly uh, that you that you try and get a sense for you know specific goals that people have in the interview, um, and you actually also were saying that somebody that a couple of people had like submitted to an accelerator actually been accepted like with a product that they had created, which is really cool. Um, have you found that like an applicant who has specific goals, like has an idea for a business that they want to make, that they want to create, or like knows exactly the job that they want when they graduate, like do, does that person stay more on track or like succeed more often? Or like does somebody need to know exactly what they want to do when they graduate in order to be a really good Iron Yard student? That is a really good question, and the answer is actually surprising. More often than not, what people think that they want changes when they realize that they have the ability to build software. Mm -hmm. And that's a pretty powerful experience because I think it's easy to imagine what a job building software would be like, but when you actually have the raw skill to make something from nothing, it changes the way you think about what you want to do with your career. And so I'm not saying that every person who comes to the Iron Yard wants to build a startup. In fact, like that's not a majority by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. They build their own apps, and a lot of people, I think, eventually want to build something that they own themselves. But um, you know, people come in and they think, you know, some people think I just want to, you know, maybe they want a stable job or maybe they want to work at a company with a, you know, certain type of company culture or, you know, certain benefits or, I mean, you name it. And I think that in, a, in the healthiest way possible, people become more preferential. Um, I really want to work on a company that's doing really neat things with Ember because I love that MVC framework. Yeah. Uh, right? Or, like, I want to learn how to scale a Rails app to you know, 100,000 users, so I want to go work for a company that sort of has that ingredient. So I think that people come in with a lot of really great aspirations, but I think once they actually have the ability to build stuff and understand how things work under the hood, they get more interested in particular areas and sort of direct their career search according to this. Yeah, cool. we've, we've actually seen, yeah. We've seen the same thing at Thinkful, like students who come in wanting to be entrepreneurs, but eventually they realize that Oh, to get to the level I need to be to make this a professional app, like a app with thousands of users. I need a I need to work on the job, and I need to work, I need to learn how to become an engineer before I like build my own um, my own company. Like if they actually intend on building it themselves, and then we see the opposite perspective as well. Like just what Eric said, people come in, they want to get a job, and they're excited to do that, but then they realize that they can build just build their own startup and and go from there. So we've seen it switch over, but to answer your original question, we've actually seen the students who are kind of on the career switching side, they're mm -hmm. much more motivated towards like staying and graduating because with the entrepreneurs, once they get to the level that their prototype is, they're, 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 they're happy with the product and then they want to go beyond that and maybe think about whether they should hire someone or, or like look for other people to build up the marketing side, whereas on the on the engineering side, then they're basically done. Interesting. But I mean, were, was your team and were you seeing students using? I know think people use Thinkful for a, tons of different like motivations. But were you yeah. seeing students using Thinkful to like get a head start to get into a boot camp, like even before the self oh, yeah. course? I mean, right? that's that was a lot of the motivation for working mm -hmm. together in the first place because we we had seen students ask like when. We do the same thing that Eric mentioned of, of when someone's interested in having in, in joining a class, we have a call with them to figure out one whether the whether Thinkful is the right fit, 
um, both, both ways. And then the second, if it is, then like if online and, and human led is a fit, then which course is the best for them? And depending on, and to answer that question is really tough because they say they want to be an entrepreneur, they say they want to be a uh, designer, they say they want to be a web developer, but until they actually try programming, they don't know for sure. And that, that, exact, that exact use case applies for boot camps too. Like before um, a student is like fully sure that they want to spend three months of their life in like an intense pace, um, they, they love like going to Thinkful to, to sing, like especially like our, our beginner friendly courses, like our front end mm -hmm. course, they'll figure out there whether it's worth it or not. And then if they are, um, they might join an advanced course or they might go ahead and join a boot camp. And, and with these prep courses, we're just making that transition a lot easier, basically. Like okay, people, so give up. But now it's like much more easier and like customized for that. Yeah. Okay, so give us the lowdown on this self-paced course. Um, yeah. I know you've got some with, with different boot camps, but what's, what's sort of special about the, the Iron Yard course? So um, for this course, like, we're really excited and, and trying out the blended model. Um, Iron Yard has a lot of success at their campuses with their lab-style lecturing. And, and if, they, if a student really wants to attend Iron Yard, and that's their main goal, they should at least have a chance to to see the teaching style and the culture firsthand. So we wanted them to have that chance. But in addition to that, um, because most of the time is spent on their own because it is a self-paced course, we have them matched with a Thinkful mentor as well. So every student in the course gets matched with, like on the mentorship side, everyone's matched with their with an online mentor who meets with them uh, an hour a week, each week, and they have like three to four years of engineering experience. Um, and then in addition to that, they meet twice a week um, or three hours a week at, at the Iron Nerd and that's led by an Iron Nerd instructor and then beyond that they also have access to the online office hours um, with Thinkful and usually around 10 of the topics of the office hours relate to what uh, the students will be covering in the course. Okay cool so Thinkful curriculum, Thinkful mentor, in-person guidance from Iron Yard. Yes and yeah. on the bingo uh, yeah, and, and, on the, and on the curriculum side, um, just a small note, mm -hmm. uh, for that we asked the admission team, like, what, what does Iron Nerd need to make, like, a really successful student in the front-end boot camp, specifically? So the goal of this course, uh, as Eric said, um, because there's no programming requirement, um, that, that's not the requirement, um, the goal of this course is by the time you graduate, you'll be at the top of your class. So you'll be, like, hit the ground running, and you'll be, like, oh, by the end of the end of the boot camp, like if you go two months with Thinkful and then the three months with Iron Yard, you'll be more than qualified to become a, like, a, a junior front-end engineer. So cool. So are people doing the course right now, the self-paced? Yes, they are. Yeah. We have a few students in both Durham and Tampa Bay. Um, tell me about like what are those students like? What kind of backgrounds are you seeing? Are you seeing like people, a lot of like complete beginners, like career changers, who are you seeing? Yeah, it's actually, uh, Eric, you can hop in if you want to, but from, I'll, I'll talk to the students and they're actually all over the place. Um, one is a high schooler who wants to get a job right now and it, he was really motivated. I remember he, he came, I had a call with the assistant instructor at the Iron Yard and he came into the, the, the session um, like having completed more than every other student. And he's still in high school. He's like super motivated. Another guy, um, he is a photographer and trying to make the career change in programming. And then another one is a mechanical engineer, um, and he has absolutely no experience. And there's a few others, but like right now, it is all over the place. Mm -hmm. And it, and this kind of format like lends itself to being accessible to anyone because if, even if you don't love the online experience, you have the in-person experience. And if you are motivated and like can be self-paced like like the high schooler student, then that might be all you need, but the in-person experience is just like another benefit. Sure. Okay, yeah. I think that, you know, just to piggyback on what Vimeek was saying, I think the exciting thing about what we do, and we talked a little bit before about what's someone's goal going through the program, um, people have a variety of goals, and even if that changes during the program, the really great part about what we get to do is that we get to help people sort of open up new opportunities for themselves, which is really exciting. And so 
for us at the Iron Yard, I mean, our bread and butter is the immersive course, and so we thought long and hard about whether we even wanted to do online, but having the mentorship focus on the thankful side and their commitment to that component of it has made a big difference for us. And so we've seen with these students, you know, high schoolers, you know, you have to have a GED to do post-secondary education mm -hmm. um, from a regulatory standpoint. Um, so if you haven't graduated high school, you can't, you know, take an Iron Yard course. And so it's exciting for us to see a high schooler or someone who's working a job as an engineer um, be able to, to actually study, but study in a way that gives them access to people who do this for a living mm -hmm. um, and rub shoulders with other people who are doing an in-person format because I think that makes the experience a lot more powerful. So increasing access for people, um, you know, who may not just who may not be ready for the format of an immersive program is really exciting for us, um, especially since that's kind of been our bread and butter. So partnering with Thinkful and doing this has been neat to see people who wouldn't necessarily come through our program actually be able to interact with us. Yeah. So you all said that you mentioned that you um, have collaborated a little bit on the curriculum also uh, just to make sure that the technologies that you're teaching are, are things that are really going to set people up for success in the immersive class. Mm -hmm. um, can you just give us a rundown of those technologies? It, sure. You're starting with front end JavaScript, HTML, CSS, um, yeah. and like why those are the first technologies, I guess, that you expect a beginner to know before they start. Cool. So I can I can hop on that. So. Yeah. Um, from our, like, for us, it was a, it was a perfect fit. Um, from Thinkful's perspective, our front end course is our most popular course because it's the most accessible for a beginner to pick up on. Um, even if before you try something like JavaScript, which is like a real programming language, HTML, CSS, like starting with that and kind of having that visual, um, visual reward is like really helpful for a beginner. And and our pedagogy on the curriculum side is helping them get to that that visual word as, as quickly as possible. So in the very beginning of the course, they're building an HTML CSS resume. And then, like you said, they learn some JavaScript. I'm scrolling down in the, in the syllabus. And they pick up jQuery and learn how to make things more animated. Um, mm -hmm. By the end of the course, they'll, they'll pick up Ajax and advanced jQuery um, and learn how to build API hacks and work with, like, what, like learn to work with other you know, engineering tools. And then finally, they'll wrap it all together in a portfolio. Um, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of content jam-packed in two months. This is normally a three-month course for Thinkful. But oh, because, really? Oh, okay. But because uh, they have the three extra hours in person with an Iron Yard instructor, like, we think we can get that there. And again, because they don't have, um, Iron Yard doesn't have, like, a strict admissions criteria, and, and um, like, some of the, the later units could be optional. So either okay. way, like, uh, a really quick learner, um, can finish the entire course and be just like super excited and ready to hit the ground running, or they can finish like two, two, three units, but still be ahead of maybe uh, a lot of the other Iron Nerd students coming in to their front end bootcamp. And from our perspective, you know, we one concern for us is obviously we we pay very close attention to our curriculum, and so when you're looking at doing online and especially partnering with someone, you know, that was a a significant concern for us, but. Um, the Thinkful team has done an amazing job of actually structuring their curriculum components and making modifications based on our feedback as far as our front-end curriculum goes in the immersive. Yeah, like an example of that, uh, to get into the specific, like they wanted, like in Thinkful's front-end curriculum, we teach JavaScript before, J or jQuery before JavaScript, mm -hmm. and there's like a lot of internal debate between mentors, but that's what we do now. Um, with Iron Nerd, they specifically asked JavaScript before teaching any frameworks associated with it, and that's something that took us like you know a few hours to like redo and make sure the transition smooth. But those kind of changes we'll make um, based off like that was the first iteration. Maybe in two months when these students are graduated, maybe there's something else we'll do to make another revision. Sure. But yeah, we're open to any feedback there. It is a it is a custom curriculum which is really um, appealing to us. Um, you know, as far as the partnership goes. Awesome. Um, okay, so I know that this course is it's called self-paced, but what does that really mean? How long do students have like access to a mentor, um, to the in-person uh, like mentor sessions? 
how long should it really take somebody to get through? Yeah. So the reason it's called self-paced is um, it is a two-month course to get into um, that you would complete um, for joining Iron Yard. But as I mentioned earlier, some of the students do work at a much quicker pace. So like mm -hmm. that student earlier is maybe a week or two ahead of his peers already, while the other ones might take a little bit longer, especially if they're complete beginners. But we're letting students take whatever pace they want, and the in-person sessions, um, they're able to kind of wrap that up and like stay on the same page and make sure, like let's say, the, here's a complete beginner student, and then the more advanced student. Mm -hmm. The advanced student can work with the beginner students on like, catching up with concepts and reviewing, because the best way to learn is to teach others. Um, but the personalized aspect of that self-paced comes with your one-on-one -on -one mentor. So that, that mentor is with you all eight weeks, and it's the same one every week. So no matter what pace all the other students are, you with your personal mentor, you can decide how fast or quickly you want to move through. For those eight weeks. Okay, perfect. Eric, what tell us about a little bit about the um, the like in person guidance that that students are getting at the campus in Durham and, and Tampa Bay. I want to hear all the cool stuff they get to do in person. Yeah, absolutely. So um, it really looks um, almost identical to what lab time in the immersive course. Okay. Um, you know, the principles are, are exactly the same. Each student has an individual learning style, and the people who are leading those sessions, um, you know, are, are looking at the individual student's progress mm -hmm. and addressing with the group things that um, apply to the whole group and addressing at an individual level the things that they may be struggling with or maybe they're succeeding in a certain area, and so they need to be pushed harder in that certain area. Um, so it really... It really looks like the lab time that we run in our normal immersive program, which is really exciting. But um, you know, the other thing that's pretty neat is one of the you know sort of I don't want to call it a drawback, but it, online only education doesn't necessarily create a pathway for you to get in touch with your local development community in person offline. And we host a ton of meetups um, in a lot of our spaces. Um, across the country, but in particular in Durham and in Tampa Bay, there's just a lot of stuff happening and a lot of really good developers, you know, hosting JavaScript meetup, Ruby meetup, iOS meetup, um, you know, startup weekends, all sorts of different things. And so I think the other thing that's exciting for people who are getting involved and sort of learning at their own pace with an online curriculum, but coming to the Iron Yard and getting involved in person is mm -hmm. they get exposed to the fabric of the local development community in their specific city. And, you know, more than any educational option um, you choose, talking to other developers who live in the same town as you is one of the best ways you can um, understand what this whole world is like. And so we have seen that people being able to just rub shoulders with the people in the community who are doing this, who are running the meetups and all that sort of stuff has been really beneficial. So um, the lab time is great and it's really beneficial, but then we also see, you know, you do your session and then there's a JavaScript meetup right afterwards. I mean, that's a really powerful experience for the people who, who are studying through the, the self-paced program. Are the Iron Yard classrooms in Durham and Tampa Bay, are they set in, like, I've I've never visited one, but are they set in? Are they like standalone classrooms, or are they set within like a co-working space, or like in an Iron Yard accelerator? Or just paint that picture for me again. That's a great question. It varies in every city. So in Durham, we're in a complex called the American Underground. Mm -hmm. and, um, there are just a ton of tech companies there. There's a venture fund there. There's an accelerator program there. Um, there's a ton of stuff happening. So it's sort of um, really sort of a, I mean, in, in our opinion, like the standard for if you want to build a tech hub as far as a physical space with all different levels of companies from, you know, a person with an idea to, you know, a software company who's, you know, working on going public, they, they kind of have everything, um, everything there. And so our mm -hmm. campus is really located in the epicenter of, what's happening in the tech scene and in the triangle, which is really exciting. 
Um, in Tampa Bay, we're in downtown St. Petersburg, and we're right across the street from American Express's development team. They have a development office there. Cool. Um, and then James has a development office there, and then there's a ton of startup activity just all around the neighborhood. Um, but it is not a part of a larger tech hub. It is a standalone. We just have a floor of a building down there. Um, and we're rubbing shoulders with all the software companies that are right around there. So it kind of varies by campus and is unique to sort of every location. Cool. Well, it's been really cool to see how Thinkful has created like a really strong online and in some cases like offline community. And so I think this sounds like a natural sort of partnership. Um, awesome. So, okay, so I just want to ask some nitty-gritty questions, and then um, I think we're going to try to wrap this up. But also, anyone who's watching, please feel free to use the Q&A app also and ask any of your questions um, from Bomik and Eric. Um, okay, so how much does this self-paced course cost? Cool. So the cost of the course is $2,500. Um, you could pay up front, or you could pay in two monthly installments. Um, Iron Yard is awesome in that if you complete the course and join Iron Nerd afterwards, $2,500 of that can be applied to the in-person tuition. And then, as, as you mentioned earlier, anyone watching this show can get a $100 discount if, they, um, if they're interested in the course. And just send me a quick email down there. Email. <laughs> <get things. laughs> um, OK, and you have to be in Durham or Tampa Bay to do this one, right? Yeah, or within driving distance. Like, if okay. you can make it to the to the, the sessions. And and if, and if you have questions around that, you can ask us and figure out like a time that works for you. OK, cool. Um, my last question is just, so could somebody potentially do this as a way to just learn front-end development in like a different way? Like, do they necessarily have to go to a boot camp or go to Iron Yard afterwards? Yeah, so for that, I it's funny, like my, my example there is, again, that high school student. He is just killing this course, and and when when like we were kind of hesitant of of letting him join the course in the beginning because we didn't know if like a high school maturity level would match someone who is like 40 or 50 taking this course, which in this case they are. But once I talked to him, he was motivated. He wants to get a job by the end of this course. And in my opinion, if he goes through all the content in two months, attends all the in-person sessions, and is connected to all the you know the local local developers in the area. Like, by, I, I think he can easily get like for 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 him at least like an internship or like start getting in the in the line of a junior developer. But if they want to spend more time and get in position to become a senior front end developer and learn much more advanced um, content, which Eric can go over, then the front end bootcamp is the perfect kind of next step. Awesome. Yeah. So. Um, I think that what we really work on super hard, and Bameek mentioned this at, um, about Thinkful as well, as far as meeting the, the students who are going through this stuff, is it kind of depends on what your goal is. And sometimes that's relative to your pre-existing skill set. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if you're already a hacker, um, Online education can be a really productive tool for you. Um, developers who work full-time jobs, I mean, they learn by reading documentation and you know going through online tutorials and all sorts of stuff. I mean, that's just part of being a developer, you know, in general um, as a career. And so, I think what we have a a really keen focus on is helping people accomplish their goals relative to where they're at when they sort of start the journey, right? And so can you take a, like, several-week online course and become a professional developer? Yes or no? I mean, it's really hard to answer that question because each person's situation is so individual. What we know from the data is that for people who are sort of dipping their toe in the water um, and who have a very cursory knowledge of programming, um, the, the immersive program is the best way and fastest way for them to build the skill set that they need to launch a career in sort of the shortest format possible. Um, 
but as I said before, I mean, that format doesn't work for everyone, and people come in with, with sort of different skill sets and different goals, and that's why I think the partnership with Thinkful is so great. So people can, there's a much lower barrier of entry, and then if you want to go into the immersive program and you decide that's what you need, then you can apply your tuition to the immersive program. And if it's not, then great. Like, you got the value out of the program, and there's no pressure to, you know, to keep going if, if you got what you needed out of it relative to your individual goals. And so I think it's a really great, um, I think it's a really great offering for people because if they get what they need, then that's, like, two thumbs up from everyone. And if you decide you need to dig deeper, like, we're going to make that even cheaper for you because you already paid tuition. Yeah, uh, like, w one, one thing to add there is that, like, let's say you went through two months through this blended online and in-person model. Maybe you've learned how to learn code, like, online. So maybe the next step is you figured out how to learn online and you can go ahead and, and finish it off on your own. Or maybe it is that you still need that in-person guidance. You still need that um, mentorship, and then so you'll continue with another Iron Nerd boot camp or a Thinkful class. Cool. Well, it sounds like very well structured and like there are a lot of potential outcomes for a lot of different types of students. Um, so I think it sounds really cool. Is there is there anything else that y'all would like to add? You've answered all of my questions very well. Um, anything else that y'all want to add before we wrap up? I guess uh, the, the only the other thing is if you're, if like right now the courses, I don't think we specified enough, but Right now, the courses are only in Durham and Tampa Bay. But yeah. If you guys are interested in like uh, in joining like an Iron Yard campus and another campus, we'd be happy to talk more. We're like um, we're focusing our attention on making this work, and obviously getting great outcomes. If they want to get into Iron Yard, like helping that transition. But beyond this, if this works out, then we'd be happy to join like another Iron Yard uh, campus. Cool. Yeah, same thing. We've had a ton of interest from a lot of places around the country and since we rolled this out. Um, you know, we're getting questions from a bunch of other campuses, and so um, this is absolutely something that we'd love to see at every single campus, and um, and we're working on making that happen. So just let us know if you want to see it in your city. <laughs> awesome. Well, it will be so cool to see how the people who are doing the self paced class um, end up, what they end up doing once they're finished. Uh, I want to meet this high schooler who's crushing it. <laughs> um, but, okay, so thank you so much for joining us, um, everyone who watched, and thank you so much to Eric and, and Bo Meek. You've been both wonderful in introducing us um, to this new option. So I'm going to post the link to this video recording um, on Course Report, and I'll also include contact information for Thinkful and for Iron Yard. Um, of course, take advantage of the $100 off that they're offering right now for the self-paced course. Um, we'll put information about that in the, below the, the recording as well. Um, and then, of course, visit Course Report. Reach out to us on Twitter or on Google+. Let us know what you want to see in our next live Q&A or webinar, and we will see you at the next one. Thanks so much. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.